Matthew's message, May 19, 2016. Climate change, pole shift, planetary course, U.S. presidential election, awakening, guidance, life purpose, illusion, reality, suicide bombers, faith in humanity's future. With loving greetings from all souls at this station, this is Matthew. Let us ease your minds about issues that are causing some anxious moments. First, with climate change, a topic of global discussion, there is talk about the seas covering islands and inundating coastal areas up to mountain ranges and people by the millions being drowned. That will not happen, Earth is not going to endanger the lives of her beloved residents during her return to a moderate climate globally. As polar ice and glaciers continue melting, water levels will continue to rise slowly and in small measure overall, and residents of potentially affected areas, sea level islands, parts of continental coastlines, banks of your largest rivers, and low-lying countries, will have plenty of time to take any necessary preventive action or relocation. Then there is the prophecy that a sudden pole shift is going to devastate the planet. It would be devastating if the shift were to happen abruptly, but it won't. Eighty-some years ago, Earth's axis was so out of balance that she was in danger of flying out into space and certain destruction. Powerful civilizations beamed massive light to stabilize Earth's orbit and enable her to start on an ascension course, and that was the onset of the pole's ongoing gradual shifting. Other readers are concerned about Earth's trajectory into a collision course with a planet that some think is Nibiru and others think is a recently detected planet considerably larger than Earth. Some information being circulated about this speculative situation is solely to create fear, but lack of knowledge is the root of most. Your astrophysicists don't know that for more than eight decades Earth has been journeying into successively higher energy planes, thus they are mystified and alarmed by seeing new celestial bodies. We reassure you, dear family, Earth will continue traveling safely and steadily all the way to our destination in fifth density. Emails about the United States presidential election have been coming in for well over a year, and now that two individuals have been designated as their party's presumptive nominees, my mother's inbox is filling with questions about who will win. Based on the ever-accelerating vibrations that are undergirding people with moral and spiritual integrity and exposing those who lack that quality, we are seeing the likelihood that neither of the presumptive nominees will become president, Senator Bernie Sanders will. If the vibratory momentum continues, the likelihood of his winning will keep moving toward certainty in Earth's energy field of potential, and in November, the voters will elect a wise, honest president. Always we are happy to receive your questions and comments, and especially at this stage of Earth's transformative process, we welcome those that give us the opportunity to offer guidance to new soul searchers. Awakening can be a very lonely and often confusing endeavor. Can Matthew offer any advice to light workers who seem to have come under psychic attack for the purpose of confusing them and making them less effective in their work? Awakening is profoundly different from anything you can remember, and if none of your family or friends has mentioned anything similar, hesitation to speak about what you are experiencing is natural, and the realization that you are a part of God can seem overwhelming, as if it is a sacrilege to even think of yourself that way. The combination of feeling lonely and bewildered about your higher state of awareness and accepting your God self can be stressful indeed and thought of as a psychic attack. When vibratory levels were much lower because darkness still enshrouded the planet, the bright auras of light workers did make them targets for dark attacks. Now the light on the planet is too intense for that, but via the universal law of attraction, thoughts about being attacked reach energy streamers with like sensations and bring them back to you. Please replace those kinds of thoughts with the knowledge that never are you alone. Not only are your guardian angel and spirit guides constantly at your side, but many souls are having an awakening experience somewhat like yours, and others are confidently moving along the path of self-discovery. Often spiritual and metaphysical bookshops host groups of like-minded individuals, or post notices of social meetups, seminars, and workshops. General bookstores carry books in that genre, too, and if you feel uncertain which to choose, 
ask within to be led to those that will be most enlightening. Search the internet for sites with postings by kindred spirits and messages from light beings such as Patricia Cota Robles, and always you can ask for divine help to feel self-confident and excited about awakening. Soon you will ease into a joyful relationship with your God Self, and avenues will open to areas where you can serve the light effectively and with deep satisfaction. Can you ask Matthew how we can find out our life purpose while here on Earth? The best way to find out what you chose as your life purpose also is the simplest, pay attention to messages from soul level to your consciousness, intuition, instinct, inspiration, aspiration, and conscience. When you follow those guidelines that are specifically aligned with choices in your soul contract, you will have a strong sense of moving smoothly along life's pathway as opposed to struggling with decisions and perhaps asking others what they think is the most logical direction for you. Is it true dark beings are being removed from Earth and taken to an alternate holographic Earth? If so this would be great since it decreases the darkness on this planet and speeds up the timetable towards full disclosure. And what is meant by we live in a holographic universe or matrix, is 3D a dream, and higher dimensions are real, or is it all just a projection of our consciousness? Dark beings leave Earth the same way light beings do, death of the physical body, and, like light beings, they enter the part of Nirvana, Earth's spirit world, where the energy corresponds to the energy they generated throughout the Earth lifetime. There are good explanations of the holographic universe in books and internet articles insofar as your cosmologists have discovered. They have mathematically concluded that the universe began with the Big Bang, but they have yet to understand that science and spirit, or, energy and cosmic consciousness, are one and the same, the love-light essence of Creator, the most powerful force in the cosmos, and source of everything in existence. Higher dimensions are real. And it isn't entirely correct to say that 3D is just a projection of one's consciousness. Whatever a person believes, however far from factual it may be, is that person's reality, and most likely you would get a serious argument from anyone whom you tried to convince that what he or she believes is just a projection of your consciousness. However, what seems real in your 3D world is a dream, or better said, an illusion, and we can explain this no more clearly than it was in a message several years ago. Mother, please find that message and copy the pertinent part. We think it will be especially helpful to awakening souls and perhaps to long-time light workers, too. What does Matthew mean when he says, we are living in an illusion? Does each person have his or her own reality or do we all share one reality? By definition an illusion is deceptive, something perceived as real but without basis in reality. The illusion of third density is that there is this one life on earth, then you die and afterwards, according to many, there's a nebulous place that's either a blessed or a hellfire and brimstone afterlife where you stay forevermore. The reality is that this is but one of many hundreds or many thousands of experiences of a soul that is living in many different forms and locations simultaneously in the universe. The illusion is that you are your body, your personality, your characteristics, your feelings, your achievements, and incidentally, only God knows where your soul goes when you die. The reality is that you are the soul, a part of God, inseparable from Him and all other souls in this universe. You are having the physical experience that you chose to balance other lifetimes, and you are an eternal being. The illusion is, according to one's religious affiliation, that the supreme being of this universe is correctly portrayed only by your religion, and his laws as interpreted by your religion are absolute. The reality is that the supreme being of this universe is subordinate to Creator, the supreme being of the cosmos. God is an amalgamation of all souls all life forms, throughout this universe, and he knows every thought and feels every feeling of every life. He cannot interfere with Creator's law of free will when souls veer from their pre-birth agreements, so it is not as will be done. Although we commonly say he, God, or the source by your name selection, is the epitome of androgyny, perfectly balanced male and female energies, and he didn't devise religions, a few of his misguided God self parts did. The illusion is that evil is the opposite of godliness, 
the reality is that darkness is the absence of light, the absence of love and spiritual clarity. The illusion is that Earth is a small, solid planet whose residents are the only verifiable intelligent life in the universe. The reality is that Earth is a soul with a planetary body that is home to beings within, on, and above her, and her surface residents for the most part are far less advanced spiritually, intellectually, and technologically than many other civilizations. Yes, each soul has his or her own illusion as it pertains to self, every facet of the lifetime, planet Earth, and the source of all, but ultimately all will share the same universal reality. Thank you, Mother. The rash of suicide bombings has evoked numerous questions, and first we say, becoming a suicide bomber never is part of a soul contract. Because each person's contract is one part of a pre-birth agreement made with others who want to share the lifetime, it must include not only a person killing someone to balance the experience of being killed, and a person who chose to be killed to balance another lifetime but must offer all other participants opportunities to experience what they chose for soul involvement. It is so that some agreements do include souls who want to transition as a group. In such a case, it is in service to all the others, who need to experience whatever emotional and financial hardships may follow the group's transitional event. Depending upon the number of souls involved, the number can vary from comparatively few to many thousands, the event may be a mode of transportation that wrecks, troops in combat, family members living in a war zone, a natural disaster, or rapid spread of a virulent disease. Some young people who become suicide bombers are indoctrinated from childhood onward to believe that they must defend their religion by killing people of other religions, and they act upon that powerful form of mind control. Their lifetime review in nirvana is very difficult emotionally as they feel the full extent of suffering that their final act caused to others. Because they acted in accordance with potent programming, they do not incur harsh karmic lessons, and their next lifetime will be dedicated to helping the neediest people in a third density civilization that has started to awaken spiritually and consciously. Suicide bombers who are adults when they decide to become terrorists, act upon a radically distorted sense of empowerment that is bereft of caring about the consequences for others. In addition to an extremely painful lifetime review, suffering exactly as did all persons whose lives were affected by their self-destruction, they will experience one or more difficult lifetimes in a low third density civilization where the karmic merry-go-round is going full tilt. That self-consignment isn't determined only by these individuals' final act. It is that the energy of their desire to kill as many people as possible and of the act itself is so dark that it supersedes all other aspects of their lifetimes. A Belgian reader who lives near the Brussels airport wrote, I must admit that it becomes ever more difficult to keep up positiveness and faith in humanity's future. I don't know what to tell other people anymore when subjects like these suicide bombings are discussed. It also becomes more and more difficult to stay convinced that after this life, another existence is waiting. I am wondering if other readers of your messages undergo the same doubts, if they too feel not connected to any out-of-the-body world anymore. Loss of faith in the future of humanity is an understandable reaction to violence when people you know have been directly affected, and while you may not think of detachment from the world as a form of divine grace, it is. It is giving the heart and mind a respite from shock and despair and sadness. In such times, it is difficult to think of a life after this one and derive any comfort from what may seem only a nebulous idea, that there is a glorious spirit world of love and peace. But holding fast to that reality is what will uplift the spirit and restore faith in humankind's determination and ability to make this world a far better place than it is this moment. Beloved brothers and sisters, Please do not doubt that this transformation within Earth's civilization is happening. As for speaking with people about tragic events, let your genuine feelings flow. Crying is ever so much healthier than stoically suppressing feelings, so let tears come in abundance. Ask for divine help to heal. See the beauty in nature. Think of the miracle of birth, the innocence of little children, and devotion of your pet. Know that there is far far more good than bad in your world, and the light is continuously strengthening good, 
weakening bad. Your expression, time heals all things, is only partly true, it is how you use time that brings healing, a return to well-being and positivity, or not. Now I am speaking just as Matthew to say that stress made its way into our last message. Attributing the devastation of Haiti to a hurricane instead of an earthquake was a rare instance of my mother's thought, and a lapse in your memory, mother, overriding my transmission. She is dismayed that the week of stress about her computer's technical difficulties, which blocked her site and email address, permitted her momentary departure from clearly hearing my words. We bid you farewell for this moment only as we are forever with you in unconditional love. Love and peace. Suzanne Ward www.matthewbooks.com